I'm a member of the Western Antique Automobile and Airplane Museum, and it's in Hood River, Oregon. So I was very fortunate here about six years ago. Uh, I, I had been flying over to the museum, knew all the guys there, and uh, when they told me about the Taylor Craft TG6 project that was going together, uh, there were some parts that they needed. And so I, I just happened to have them. The bright blue and yellow one, that's the TG4, and it looks like a, more like a sailplane. It's got the longer wings. They're just very gentle aircraft. They have a really slow roll rate because of the long wings. And then you can see the other ones, the, the TG6 and the TG8, the silver ones. They have shorter wings and, and their performance is not as good on purpose um, to more match what was going on with World War II gliders. So they don't fly all that well as a glider, but they were purpose built for that training role and they did great in that role. We're celebrating about 75 years of the U.S. glider program. And the glider program doesn't have a, a one set start date. Uh, World War II started and the Germans used gliders very successfully in Belgium. And uh, we were trying to emulate their success. So we wanted to jumpstart a glider program. So this was one of the, the things that was done to get more glider pilots online uh, as quickly as possible. So when the glider training program came out, Hap Arnold had the idea that we need to copy what the Germans are doing. And so they decided to put out the industry that we need cargo troop gliders. So the Waco CG4 was uh, the glider of choice. So when they started this program, they really didn't know anything about gliders. The head of the CAA, Charles Stanton, says what we need to do is take the engine off of Cubs, Taylor Crafts, and Aronkas, have a seat cockpit welded to the front, and use those. All three companies, within about nine days, had prototypes flying, and then they were producing the TG 5, 6, and 8s immediately. They needed to get 10,000 pilots trained, so they started what was a basic course. They were called, affectionately, dead stick schools. Turn the mag switch off, pull the nose up, stop the prop, and land dead stick. And before they went to the glider schools, they had 35 hours of dead stick training. It was like, this is what the glider guys need. They need to know that they have one shot. You are gonna land, you have to do it right the first time. So even though the glider pilots were kind of considered the washouts, they were actually more of the better pilots. I think that it was a very hairy experience. And uh, they have the glider wings, uh, which are on our back. And G is for glider, but they, they were proud to say that G was for guts because they're often carrying heavy equipment like howitzers and jeeps and things like that that could really damage the aircraft if they landed wrong. So, very brave men. It was a, a dangerous job and they didn't have stellar statistics, but the invasions couldn't have been successful without those gliders carrying those men on, into the front. So. Um, they always considered it a success, but by today's standards, I think most people look at the statistics and say, oh, bad, that was, that was carnage. And they were in, you know, used in Normandy, invasion of southern France, and some other um, Operation Market Garden, for example. So this is part of that, and we wanted to share that, because it's not a history that very many people know about uh, with World War II. The ones I was talking about are the um, CGs, the cargo gliders, and those, there are none flying at all. Um, there are a couple of pieces and parts, and some people are trying to restore some to static display. The TG-6 and the TG-8, a lot of them were converted back into powered aircraft, so they're still out there. These are the only two flyable at this time. There is uh, a couple other uh, groups and gentlemen that are building, uh, restoring aircraft. They're, they're actually not bad to fly, but you just are like a, an airplane with no engine. When you have an engine failure, you're coming down right now. 